Hello, pretty friends. So you kind of have to forgive the audio on this one a little bit. I seem to have misplaced my little mic. So I tried to move the camera closer so maybe you can hear me a little bit better. I know it kind of echoes in here uh, without it, but we're just going to try to make do. So this is our very last episode for the Titanic series. And I'm really excited about this one because this is a dessert that I have never even heard of. It sounds really interesting. It's got kind of a neat little way of putting it together. So hopefully it turns out really good. This would have been served on the RMS Olympic, which was a uh, Titanic sister ship. I will go ahead and put a copy of the menu up here so you can see where I got it and what date was on there. And so, yeah, I think it's going to turn out really cool. Apparently it is a very traditional Irish uh, dessert. So let's go ahead and turn this camera around. I've got all of our ingredients out and ready to go. But first, we're going to go ahead and finish Olympic story and talk about the rest of her career. Then we will get into cooking. Unlike the Titanic, the RMS Olympic actually had a long and illustrious career. After the Titanic disaster, she was refitted with 68 lifeboats and extra davits and had modifications to her hull to make her extra watertight. During World War I, she distinguished herself by saving the crew of the HMS Audacious before it sank. And in May of 1918, she successfully survived a German U-boat attack and was able to ram the U-boat, breaching its hull and sinking it. The captain did not stop to pick up survivors, but continued on to France. 31 survivors from U-103 was picked up later by another ship. She carried 201,000 troops during the war and earned the nickname Old Reliable. But she returned to civilian service and here she is with actual audio coming into New York. She had another accident in 1934, where in heavy fog she actually rammed the Nantucket lightship. Four went down with the ship, seven were rescued, but three died later. The Olympic had minimal damage done to her bow. As the Great Depression loomed onward, shipping was hit particularly hard. It was decided in 1935 to take Olympic out of service and have her scrapped. It's sad for us, but here's a news item at the time putting another perspective on it. Team up for the last time. The Olympic is at Southampton, her decks empty, and for the last time the Blue Peter flutters from her masthead. The old White Star liner is sailing on her last voyage, en route for Jarrow and the Shipbreakers, but there is no send-off. She had a wonderful war record, sinking two enemy submarines and carrying thousands of troops in safety. They called her the Old Reliable. Now her days are done, and away she goes, reliable to the last. Jarrow, which has suffered as severely as any of the depressed areas from the bitterness of unemployment, is in luck's way at last. And all along the banks of the Tyne, crowds wait to see the Olympic arrive at the end of her last voyage. <laughs> The 46,000 ton liner is on her way to the shipbreaking yard and brings 18 months work and 100,000 pounds in wages to the hard hit town. So the tragedy of the Olympics last trip becomes a journey of good omen for the Tynesider. A lot of her fittings were actually sold to auction and now parts of her first class lounge and the grand staircase is found at the White Swan Hotel in England. 
Several of her panels and light fixtures, doors and windows had also been in a paint factory in England until they were auctioned in 2004. There's a suite in the Sparth House Hotel in Lancashire that not only has some of her furniture, but also some light fittings, sinks, wardrobes, and a fireplace. There's timber found in a church. And even celebrity cruises use some of Olympic's original panels to make a Olympic restaurant on their new ship. The clock, honor and glory crowning time from the Grand Staircase, is on display at a Southampton Sea City Museum. And so it is possible to see relics of one of the most beautiful ships ever created. Now to get started on our dessert, go ahead and get some water boiling because we're going to steep our tea. While it's cooling down, go ahead and remove the crust from your bread. You can save those for breadcrumbs or croutons later, and then go ahead and cut your bread into squares. Leave that in a bowl, and now we're going to go ahead and make our spice mixture. Go ahead and add them all together in a little bowl and mix well. Then go ahead and add your cooled tea to the bread and mix that until it's soft and kind of mushy. And now you're going to add your raisins, your flour, and your honey and spices. Give that a good mix and set aside for about 30 minutes. Now you'll see me cheating just a little bit. I use store-bought pastry, but that's because I knew I was going to go to Costco soon and I kind of needed to clean out my freezers. Otherwise, feel free to go ahead and make a homemade pie crust. I placed mine in the pan and cut it to size, then used it as a template to cut the other crust. Place one crust back in the pan and pour all of your bread mixture in it. Smooth it out and then place your other crust on top. You'll use a fork to make holes in the top crust. Then bake in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Once cooled, dust with confectioner's sugar and cut into squares. You're now ready to try your Olympic dessert. Okay, we finally have them done. Now, uh, again, I still can't find my little mic, so I kind of tried to bring you a little up close and personal just to maybe make the external mic pick up a little better, so we'll cross our fingers and hope. But let's go ahead and try what really looks like an interesting dessert. Wow, that is a burst of flavor that I did not expect to happen. Now, unfortunately, Mitch had to be at work today, so he doesn't actually get to benefit from this right now, but I will try to save him a slice for when he gets home because I really think he's going to like this too. It's extremely refreshing. It's not a heavy dessert which is kind of interesting because it's mostly bread product, right? Like, you know, your pastry, your bread in the middle, but there's something about the tea and the spices that really makes this taste fresh. Um, I can actually really picture this at Christmas because it, like with the cinnamon and the ginger and the nutmeg, it kind of 
has that Christmassy Thanksgiving kind of feel to it. So I would actually not be opposed to putting this out on my Thanksgiving table or my Christmas dinner table because I think it'd really be a hit. It's also a great way to use up that stale bread. You know, we made a bread recipe, um, which is kind of like an Amish friendship bread, but in our family, we call it a sourdough. And it is a type of sourdough. It's just not like the rustic bread that everyone kind of thinks of when they think sourdough. But, you know, it makes three loaves at a time. Some people freeze it like we do, but sometimes you might not get to it soon enough. And so you kind of might have some stale bread. This would be a perfect way to use up your leftover sourdough bread recipe with because it makes it new, it makes it fresh, and it just tastes good. I can see why they would have featured this on the Olympic. Now, like I said last week, um, it does make sense. When I first picked this, I just wanted to do a dessert um, from one of the ships, and so I didn't actually look into the history of it. And then I found out uh, as I was looking through recipes and stuff that this is an Irish dish. And that does make sense because just like last week we had the Irish stew, um, now we've got Chester cakes because there were a ton of Irish coming over from Ireland to America. And so it makes sense that the White Star Line um, would feature a lot of things on their menu that were traditionally Irish. And like I said, this has the added benefit of using up leftovers. So if you had some bread that didn't go the uh, day before and you need to use it up, when you're on board ship, you don't want to waste food, right? So you turn it into a dessert. I think it's a win-win situation. It uses things up that would normally might go in the garbage into a really, really good dessert. That's also easy to do, especially like me, if you just needed to use up some pie crust and you decided to go that route, but even throwing together a homemade pie crust isn't that hard, and so you don't really have a whole lot of work into it. So it's quick, it's easy, it uses up leftovers. I can't see anything wrong with this dessert at all. So there you go, that's another wrap up to a Titanic extravaganza that we had this month, ending with her sister ship, the RMS Olympic, and learning about her history. So thank you for watching this time, and hope you stick around for some more shipping history for next month. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.